every time the 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 professor said Al Qaeda, he sort of like his shoulders yeah. went up, and you know, yeah, he's in command like, here. Al Qaeda, you know, has been he's an expert. Was, <laughs> you don't say America with an yeah. intensity. You yeah. don't say England with yeah. an intensity. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't say um, the army with an intensity. Qaeda. <laughs> But you say these these names because you you want that that word to carry weight. Well, they should carry weight, right? That was video that recently surfaced of Congresswoman Ilhan Omar being awfully flippant about terror groups like Al Qaeda and Hezbollah. Omar, who graduated from North Dakota University in 2011, was recalling a class that she took on terrorism and joked about how her professor emphasized the terms Al Qaeda and Hezbollah. She also said the reactions to those words were obviously different to how people say America or England or the U.S. Army. These comments surfaced after other highly controversial comments about Omar, or that Omar rather made about 9-11 and the terror attacks which occurred on that date. Those comments ricocheted around Washington, D.C. to the cover of the New York Post and eventually across America. This was the Congresswoman at a recent event for CARE, which stands for the Council on American Islamic Relations. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Now, Representative Omar is no stranger to controversy, and she's been rebuked by Nancy Pelosi and Democratic leadership before. Remember those anti-Semitic tropes that Nancy Pelosi talked about and a few others hit her back for? Well, now after these flippant 9-11 comments, fellow members of the freshman clique in Congress, AOC and Rashida Tlaib, well, they're coming to Omar's defense. And the veracity of their support for Omar also shows us they may be running the Democrats' agenda. Because this is not normal, and this is not a normal level of p political debate or rhetoric. Taking it out of context, this is just pure racist act by many of those, hateful acts by those, because she does speak truth. Democrats Rashida Tlaib and AOC are fired up and coming to the defense of their colleague, Ilan Omar. Tlaib says anyone offended by Ilan's recent comments on 9-11 is basically a racist. They do this all the time to us, especially women of color. They do that. They take our words out of context because they're afraid because we speak truth. We speak truth to power. My sister, Ilhan Omar, she, what she was talking about was uplifting people by supporting their civil liberties and civil rights. Both congresswomen say the response to Omar's comments, including this New York Post cover story, is dangerous. We are getting to the level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. And if they can't figure out how to get it back to policy, we need to call it out for what it is. They're also talking about a fundraising email from an Ohio College Republican club that referred to AOC as a domestic terrorist. That group has since apologized. But the trio has also been highly critical of Texas Republican Congressman and former Navy SEAL Dan Crenshaw, who simply called Omar's comments unbelievable. Omar followed up her 9-11 comments and the criticism thereof on Stephen Colbert's show with this. And you see this outrage um, when I speak the truth. Everyone else's truth is allowed, but my truth can never be. While she might not like the coverage or comments are getting by some media outlets, others, though, are fawning all over her. She's featured on this week's cover of Newsweek magazine, and she's been credited with changing the conversation on Israel. She also appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone not too long ago, along with her fellow freshman and the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. This month, the full House came together to condemn the anti-Semitic myth of dual loyalty and all forms of bigotry with a resolution that, quote, rejects the perpetuation of anti-Semitic stereotypes in the United States and around the world. More recently, Pelosi and other senior Democrats have tried to marginalize Representative Omar. But her latest comments on 9-11 in the fiery defense provided by her friends Talib, AOC, and other far-left Democrats shows just how difficult it might be for Pelosi and the Democratic leadership in the Senate as well. All right, still with us, Steve Rogers and Rob Tobb. Steve, you know, it's been interesting to notice that Nancy Pelosi, you know, she doesn't have the APAC conference coming up, so she hasn't pushed back against Ilhan Omar for these recent comments. You think she would? But on the other hand, this might also show us, look, these young women in the Democratic Party are, are holding a lot of power now. They have a lot of social media followers. Who is in control, Steve, of the Democratic Party right now? Hey, look, this is the best gift God has given the Republican Party in a long time. 
Uh, these individuals are not in control of the Republican part. I'm sorry, the Democrat Party. They're renegades. And the establishment Democrats have no choice but to begin to rein them in. Because I'll tell you, I get around and I've talked to a lot of conservative Democrats who are fed up with this type of behavior. These individuals do not care about our culture. They do not care about the Constitution. They do not care about our way of life. They simply don't care for anything but their agenda. And I got to tell you, it's hard to figure out what their agenda there is other than a destructive agenda. Well, Steve, I'm not so sure it's the greatest gift for the Republican Party. Uh, we'll, that, we'll wait to see on that one. But Rob, you know, when you hear what Steve says there, you know, what do you think? Are these young freshman Democrat, are they, they hold too much power? Do you think they'll be checked? We've heard stories about a primary challenge for Ilhan Omar in her own district. What happens now? They're their own worst enemy. I'm going to say three words together that you might not have expected tonight. Steve, you're right. First of all, her analogy about how you use Al-Qaeda and, and the United States together is, is stunning to me because that would be like, I would say, Mother Teresa, Adolf Hitler. Uh. Well, of course there should be a difference be between the way we're going to refer to a terrorist group in our country. And for her not to understand the difference between that is really pathetic. And she's so stupid that she's an insult to stupid people. Well, and Steve, let's not forget she still really sits feel. on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Yes, she does. Uh, but let me make one thing clear. I'll articulate or clarify something. I said she's the greatest gift to the Republican Party because we could work very hard to try to expose their agenda, but it's coming out of their own mouths. And that's very important sure. for us. But, yeah, she sits on those committees. They're appeasing her. They're, they're putting her on committees, and they're going to marginalize her. They get it. Believe me. Nancy Pelosi, I, I, I've got to say, her and Schumer have to be scratching their heads, wondering what on earth did we have elected here. But this is going to be a one-term uh, uh, event for these individuals. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to, you know, to have a conversation with somebody or try to do anything, reach across the aisle, when they're going to cause you, call you a racist for anything you do to criticize them. Well, John, I also wanted to add that my father served in World War II with distinction. When, and, and we had allies, and he served with people from France, he served with people from England. So we, we served with other countries. They were our allies. Israel is our ally. That doesn't mean that we have some, some kind of warped agenda because we stand with them and stand by them. We all stand for freedom. And if she doesn't understand that, again, she's suffering from an inverted cerebellum. I'm sorry, I just find somebody like this, the smirking arrogance that she displays is really upsetting to me. If you can't well, you tell. see the arrogance really on display, Steve, when she's talking in front of care, when she's talking to, you know, a friendly audience. When she goes in, in a more public setting, she, she has a different tone. And I think that's another thing that makes, you know, her comments so concerning and makes her seem really disingenuous. And, it, and, it, and you're right. And that tone about uh, bringing socialism to this country, but more importantly to all of us, by really trying to uh, antagonize a problem with Israel. Look, we will defend Israel. The president made it clear we will defend Israel to our last breath and nobody is going to change that but you're absolutely right she's a politician right to the core just tell people what they want to hear when you're in front of them and you know what everything will be fine but now we're all on to her even her own party's on to her and believe me we will stand firm we will stand strong and a president by the way despite what she and others think will be re-elected by a landslide come 2020. <laughs> All right. Well, Newsweek putting her on the cover. Not a lot of freshman Congress people get that honor. Uh, honor. I don't know if you want to call it that anymore, but we'll see. All right. Stay with us. More to come. We're going to take a look at the.